Okay, now let's talk about fracture toughness. Fracture toughness, what is it? Well, it's simply the measurement of a material's resistance to brittle fracture when a crack is present. And it's defined by the following. I'll give you just a note here that Y for many specimens is going to be 1. So if it's not given to you and you're not solving for it, just assume it's 1. So we're bringing back that critical stress for crack propagation. We talked about that last time. We have our crack length A, and we have the dimensionless parameter. And so what this is saying is that this is how resistant a material is to fracture when that crack is present. So it, you know, a material with a very high resistance, well, even if it's got a crack, it's gonna to have to be a very big crack or a very stressed crack for it to fail. However, however, one thing you might be thinking is, okay, well, if I've got a really thick piece of metal, and I've got a very, a fairly, you know, a thinner piece of metal, well, obviously the thick piece of metal is going to be able to take a whole lot more than that thin piece of metal. And I can understand why you would think that. Now, if you're talking about like, you know, a bowling ball hitting it or a meteor or something, you're right. But when it comes to this fracture failure, you're wrong. Because for specimens where the thickness is much greater than the crack dimensions. And remember, these cracks are tiny. They're very, very tiny. Your fracture toughness is actually independent of thickness. It doesn't actually matter how thick it is. Now, obviously, if you're paper thin, then yes, it matters. That's going to be completely different. Um, but if you're not paper thin, then the thickness of the material doesn't actually matter. The reason for that is because you have a condition of plain strain. Okay plane strain at any particular cross-section you look at. And what's going on here is you're having a failure that is simply it dividing in half. So if you look at this, it doesn't matter if this is twice as thick. It can be twice as thick, that's fine. And yet it's still going to part along that line just as easily. Um, just think about like a loaf of bread. Okay, you have a loaf of bread. Mm, it smells so good, you know, you just got it out of the oven. And you go to cut it. So you take your knife and you start cutting it, you know, sawing back and forth right here. Well, the thing is, it doesn't matter where you begin to cut that. It doesn't matter how long the bread is. It really doesn't even matter how thick the bread is. It's still going to cut at that same spot just as easily. Um, and so a similar thing is happening here. It's parting. And because of that, it's going to continue to crack along that and fracture along that just as easily for a thick material as it would for a thin material. Now, this value of this plain strain fracture toughness is relatively high for ductile metals and fairly low for brittle ones. And once again, if you look at this, you can kind of see why, because if we have that crack and it's propagating that way, a ductile material will round that out. It will, because all the stress is concentrated at that tip, it will actually deform that first and keep it from parting for a second. It will make it more difficult for it to fail. If we look at this, we can look at our fracture toughness ranges. This, once again, this is for that um, parting mode, which is going to happen. Um, and what we can see is that steels, they're way at the top, they've got a very high fracture toughness. While diamond, you might be kind of surprised, yes, it's the really good for all those graphite and ceramics. However, it's not all that tough. It's actually a fairly brittle. And so brittle materials have a low fracture toughness. Diamond is strong. I mean, it's great for many things, but it is still brittle. It's why you can break diamonds if you smash them with a piece of metal. Um, in fact, a very interesting detail is that recently there has been all of these like discoveries of ginormous diamonds. Okay, not that big, you know, but still very, very big. Think like the size of a baseball diamonds. Okay, huge. And the way that company is finding them, like there's one company that's found like several world record diamonds, is they're being very careful in how they drill because. In many situations, when we're trying to find diamonds, you know, we have diamonds underground here and we're trying to get to that diamond. We just know that there's one underground. And so you start drilling and you have this big old drill. And guess what it does? It cracks the diamond. Well, this company is being very, very careful and saying, okay, rather than drilling like that, 
let's do some x-rays. So they do an x-ray, they look for it, they see what they think is going to be a diamond, and then they dig very carefully to it, and they're finding them. They're finding very, very big diamonds because they're not breaking big diamonds into small ones. So there's lots of reasons you would want to know when something's very tough. We can also see that fract or composite fibers, there's so many different ways that we can combine things into composites, and it can have a very, very wide range of properties because of that. Okay, that's it for this time. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all later. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.